Everyone dunks on Michael Jordan, the owner, but can you imagine how exciting it was when he bought the Hornets in 2010? The GOAT is gonna run our franchise? But turns out he slapped more of his own players than one playoff series. Three playoffs in 13 years, and he got zero superstars. Closest thing was three-time All-Star Kimball Walker. Downside of that is not being able to trade the superstar to jumpstart your rebuild, like the Jazz. Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell became a million picks. His biggest win was buying the Hornets for 275 million, selling them for three billion. Nice investment, but it is horrible for LaMelo Ball. How bad are the Hornets if we compare them to every other young team? You got the Thunder, the Magic, the Grizzlies. Where exactly does LaMelo's team stack up the next five years? We'll rank the teams, but something has gone terribly wrong for LaMelo as a player. Remember how fun his first year was? He won Rookie of the Year over Anthony Edwards. He made the All-Star team one year before him, but now LaMelo is irrelevant next to Ant. A respected writer named Matt Moore ranked the top 100 NBA players. Anthony Edwards, 25th over Jamal Murray. LaMelo, 84th. Two below senior citizen Al Horford. All right, okay, that's extreme. Well, the ringer has Ant 24th. They've got LaMelo 50. The Athletic does it in tears. Ant is a 3A player, LaMelo a 3C. Either way, Ant has passed him up because of team success. I mean, the Wolves get to the playoffs so Ant can prove what he can do on the big stage. LaMelo doesn't even have that chance, but he would be awesome. Remember his rookie year. That crazy announcer guy. Oh, oh a double clutch dipsy do boom! Hop diddly dee! What happened to that? The organization under MJ has failed to support him. Just look at the bizarre case of Kai Jones. He was drafted 19th overall in 2021 over someone like Quentin Grimes, who would be a great fit. Instead, Kai is their third big behind Mark Williams and Nick Richards. And how is he handling that? Let's just say it doesn't look good. The goat time out there, I'm in the goat day. I had to do drugs or something. <laughs> no, <man. laughs> I'm not saying he's definitely on hardcore drugs, but this is what Kai normally sounds like. Uh, to my new team, I'm going to Charlotte. Uh, I'm going to bring versatility and all around plays from inside and out. I'm not saying he's definitely on drugs, but if you color on your walls in crayon, it might be a red flag. Then Kai goes on a Twitter rampage saying he's better than Prime Shaq, LeBron, Steph, and even better than LaMelo. All of his teammates unfollowed him on social media. And what is the Hornets' response? Nothing. They have said nothing and are clearly not supporting him. But who are they supporting? Miles Bridges. He had the best season of his career in 2022. A great connection with LaMelo Ball. But let's not pretend he wouldn't be getting this second chance if he wasn't a good player. Like, remember when Myers Leonard said an anti-Semitic slur on a live stream? He basically got banned from the NBA because, oh yeah, he sucks. But Miles pled no contest to choking his girlfriend in front of their kid, was in line for a big payday, but is back on the Hornets on a one-year deal. Is that who you want potentially leading your team? No, but they have no leadership. LaMelo is a young kid who needs solid vets, but the Hornets are toxic. LaMelo was known as a goofy kid before the NBA, but not a bad person. As Austin Rivers said, Say what you want about LeVar Ball, but all three of his kids are good people. Yeah, LiAngelo stole some sunglasses in China, but that's it. I know ranking the best young NBA teams will trigger a lot of you, and we'll get to that, but it reminds me of other stars who wasted their prime on a bad team. These are just some of the names, but Pete Maravich led the Hawks to the postseason every year, but never returned after getting to the Jazz. We know about Dame and DeMarcus Cousins, but you might be surprised to see AI. His Sixers made the finals in 2001, but Iverson was the only player on that team who could get his own shot. After that, he never made it out of the second round in Philly. Missed the playoffs three times in his prime, but the best comp is T-Mac. His prime started in Orlando, but his co-star Grant Hill was always injured. Then he finally gets to a contender in Houston, but T-Mac's body broke down. I'm concerned by the time LaMelo gets out of Charlotte, the injuries catch up. 
He has already missed a third of his games with injury. People look at his brother Lonzo and question LeVar's overtraining style when they were growing up. So the next five years are critical for LaMelo because we don't know how long his career will be. And those next five years are all in Charlotte. He just signed a Supermax to keep him there, which makes sense, it is generational wealth. So how do the Hornets stack up with other young teams? We will rank the 11 youngest teams in the league. Number one, the Grizzlies. John Morant is the best young player on this list despite his issues. They also have all-star caliber Desmond Bain, picks, and cap space. They're already playoff tested and have the best record of any team here. Number two, the Thunder with SGA's gigantic leap. Stacked with talent like Josh Giddy, Chet Holmgren, tons of picks and cap space. Number three, the Knicks. Already good, and I believe a superstar is on the way. They could be number one on this list. Number four is the Spurs. They were dead last just a year ago, but Wimbanyama is that kind of game changer. Number five, the Magic. Already have an elite one-two with Palaban Caro and Franz Wagner. Plus, lots of trade ammo for a star and a good front office. Number six, the Brooklyn Nets, based on free agency. Stars want to be in New York. The Nets have nine first round picks the next six drafts to trade. They also have max cap space in 2025. They can add a star with Mikel Bridges the next five years. Next, the Pacers, who have a better player than the Nets with Tyrese Halliburton, but I'm concerned that they will be mediocre the next five years, leading to mediocre draft picks. They aren't a free agent destination, so how do they get better? Eighth is the Blazers. Could be higher if Scoot is a star, but they get a boost to a rebuild when they trade Damian Lillard. The Pistons are ninth because they have Cade Cunningham, who is a future all-star, and coach Monty Williams, but in the draft, they got super unlucky, dropping from potentially number one overall to number five. Tenth is the Utah Jazz, who do not have a star. I don't care what Laurie Markkinen did last year. Their positive, though, is a war chest of picks but the draft is a crapshoot. Below them, the Rockets, who have a good coach with Ime Udoka, but Jalen Green is their best player. We still don't know what his ceiling is. Dead last, though, is the Hornets. Their coach is Steve Clifford. No other team would have hired him as head coach. Front office has whiffed on their draft picks, not a free agent destination. Unless Brandon Miller becomes an elite young wing, LaMelo will waste his prime like AI. But which star will the Knicks actually get? Bill Simmons guaranteed it's either Giannis, Embiid, or Donovan Mitchell, so I narrowed it down to just one. 